My name is Arthur Rose. Um, I live in the southern part of England and uh, my brother who got killed in Operation Market Garden in 1944, hence I'm in Holland to see. He's been here now 73 years and uh, he joined up in February 1943. He did a training, joined the Hampshire Regiment and then he landed D-Day Plus. He couldn't land on the date because a storm blew up. Most of the ships got damaged, so they had to bounce about in the middle of the channel to cool down. He landed then at Normandy Aramage, and uh, from then on, he, he belonged to the cyclist battalion, so he just they had to dump his bicycles because they were no good, because the roads were mined, they had to use the fields. So, um, he then got involved in uh, L112 in Normandy and most of the other places until they actually drove the Germans over to southern of Normandy. Um, my brother then landed, uh, got across the river sign at, um, uh, and, he, and, and it, they got over the sign, started a bridgehead and they landed in a little village called Tilly. That was where my brother had his 20th birthday, and that was on the 6th of September 1944. Then on, they travelled right through France, ended up at Brussels, and then they did the training ready for the poor old Operation Margaret Garden. He was then uh, in what they call 43rd Div, which was an infantry division, and they travelled up and they got held up in many of the places because the Germans were driving, tried to drive them it away. Eventually, they got on the, the island, which you call the Betawa, and they, they stopped outside uh, between Hadrian and Drill. And in the meantime, they got the minister, minister managed to bring the paratroopers over and they went off down to Neumagen and have a cup of tea and our boys had to stop there to keep their eye on the Germans. The Germans sent a, 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 quite a few troops over the Rhine to a brick factory and they tried to get them out of the brick factory. On the 4th of October, the final day they were going to be relieved by the Americans, they, they attacked the, bridge, uh, the brick factory about up at seven in the morning and that was where my brother got killed. From all accounts he had a brain gun and him and a Canadian barreled man, Captain Annika, both got killed at the same time. On that attack there was about 43 of our boys died beside all the wounded and, and we afterwards in 1988, we managed to get a monument put on that dike road for those people that got killed in 1944. My brother's been buried now for 73 years. As I say to some of the young Dutchmen, he's more of a Dutchman than anybody, because he would have been 92. And he's 15 months older than me. So, my father would not believe he was killed. He kept looking up in the sky and watching me just after the war and watched the Dakotas come over. And he always said he was in these, one of these planes, but he would never believe that he died. I've got some medals here that were issued to my father for, my, for his brother, his son. And he wouldn't believe, and he just threw them in a drawer. And that's why well, he's in a bit of a state now. He, he was asked by the Dutch to come over to write something on the bottom of the stone at my brother's grave. And my dad would never believe it because he didn't want proof that he'd gone. 